Section 8.7 is factoring special cases. Learning target here and what we're shooting for, I can factor perfect square trinomials and the difference of two squares. Big ideas here, some trinomials, such as the squares of binomials or differences of two squares, can be factored by reversing the rules for multiplying special case binomials. So in section 8.4, I believe it was, uh, we multiplied a binomial squared or the product of a sum and a difference. Here, we're going to start off with special trinomials um, or special polynomials in standard form and break them back into their factors, uh, doing the opposite of what we did in that section. So any trinomial of the form a squared plus 2ab plus b squared is called a perfect squared trinomial because it's the result of squaring a binomial. And we know that. We know that if we take a plus b squared, we get this. Okay, that's what we learned in 8.4. We square our first one, we square our last one, we multiply them together and double it, 2ab. Our take note on page 523 talks about factoring perfect square trinomials. So here, if we start with our perfect squared in standard form, we can factor it back into its two binomials and then write it as one binomial squared. Whether it's a plus or a minus in that middle term, it doesn't matter. So here's some quick ways to recognize a perfect square trinomial. The first term has to be a perfect square and the last term has to be a perfect square. Uh, in order for it to be a perfect square, it has to be a plus our last term. Negative times a negative or a positive times a positive. Then we have to double check our middle. Our middle term has to be double the product of our factors from A and from B. So again, the middle term is twice the product of one factor from the first term and one factor from the second term. In example one, uh, we're going to come up with the factored form for this. If we look here, x squared is a perfect square, x times x, and 36 is a perfect square, 6 times 6. So it's possible that here we took x times itself and 6 times itself. Now we just have to check and see, is our middle term the product of 6 and x doubled. So we multiply those together, 6 times x, and double it, which is 12x. Perfect. Uh, here it's going to be a minus, and we'll square it then. Because we have a perfect square trinomial, okay, x times x is how I get to x squared. 6 times 6 is how I get to 36. If I multiply them together, and double it, I get 12x, and it's negative because our middle term is negative. So we write that as our binomial squared. We also could have factored this the same way that we have been doing, so if you don't recognize that it's a perfect square trinomial, that's fine, it's just going to save you a little bit of work. Uh, so here we need to multiply to 36 and add to 12. Our options, 1 and 36, no, 2 and 18, no, 3 and 12, no, 4 and 9, no, 6 and 6, yeah. So here, to multiply to x squared is x and x. We're going to multiply to 36 and add to 12. So since we add, we found the sum, which means our signs are the same, both negative. We said 6 and 6 here. So since our bases are both the same here, we can rewrite that as x minus 6 squared. And we get to the same place we did over here. Um, it just took us a few more steps. So it's fine to do it this way. I'd love for you to at least practice in this section uh, while we're doing these using the perfect square trinomial, recognizing those, uh, because we will need that next chapter. Uh, but if you're not sure, we can still factor it this way. Now feel free to pause here and give these a try if you'd like. We're going to come up with the factored form here. If we look, x squared is a perfect square. 9 is a perfect square. 3 times 3. 
Now, we have to double check. We can't just say, yep, this is a perfect square trinomial. We have to double check that when we multiply those together and double it, 6x matches 6x. Since it does, we take the sign of our middle term and square it. And this is our perfect square. Okay, you also could have factored it by multiplying to 9 and adding to 6. Options 1 and 9, 3 and 3. x and x to get to x squared to get to 9 and positive 6 for both pluses and 3's here. So that also would have worked, uh, but this way is a lot quicker, a lot easier, and that pattern is a good one to recognize. So in B here, x squared is a perfect square, 49 is a perfect square. So to get to x squared, it's x times x. To get to 49 is 7 times 7. Now we have to check that middle term to make sure it works. So we have to take 7 times x, and then don't forget we have to double it and get 14x, which matches here. So this is a check. We take the sign from the middle and square it because we have two of those factors. Again, to multiply it back to check, we take our first term, square it. We take our last term, square it. We multiply the two together, x times negative 7, and double it. And we check back with where we started so we know that we're good there. In example two here, we're going to be finding a length. Digital images are composed of thousands of tiny pen, uh, pixels rendered as squares, as shown on page 524. Suppose the area of a pixel is 4x squared plus 20x plus 25. What is the length of one side of the pixel? So here it says that these are squares, and we know that when we have a square, our side lengths are the same. So we know here that we would have had to take a side and square it. So we're going to have one factor squared, um, which is kind of a spoiler alert that this is going to be a perfect square trinomial. We also could have looked at the polynomial itself, recognized that 4x squared is a perfect squared, and 25 is a perfect square. So it would have at least been worth checking out. Uh, keep in mind, we still want to factor out anything that's common if we can. Here, we don't have anything common. I have just fives here, just twos here, and both there. So since I don't have anything common uh, between all my terms, there's nothing I can factor out. So we're going to check, is this a perfect square? Well, 4x squared is a perfect square. We can take 2x times 2x. And 25 is a perfect square, 5 times 5. Now, we've got to check that middle term. We're going to multiply these together, 2x times 5, which is 10x, and then don't forget to double it because our outsides and insides would both be the same. We get 20x, which checks. So our last steps are to take our sign from the middle and add our square. So 2x plus 5, that binomial squared, is the factored form here, but we're not looking for the factored form. We're looking for what is the length of one side. So our side is 2x plus 5. 5. All the sides on our square would be 2x plus 5. Now, feel free to pause here and give this a try if you'd like. You're building a square patio. The area of the patio is 16m squared minus 72m plus 81. What is the length of one side of the patio? So again, here's a little spoiler alert. It says it's a square patio. So we know that to find the area of a square, we take our side length and square it. So our side that we're looking for is going to be squared. So we know it's going to be a perfect square trinomial here. Um, we also could have recognized that 16 is a perfect square, and so is 81. So since both of those are perfect squares, we can check to see, is this a perfect square trinomial? 16 is 4 times 4, and m squared is m times m. 81 is 9 times 9. So since our 16m squared is our first term, 4m is our first term. And 81 was our last term, so we plugged it, that in last. Now, we still have to double check that middle. So we multiply our two factors together, 4m times 9, 
and double it to get 72m, which matches there. So we know it's a perfect square trinomial. Our sign in the middle is what we give our polynomial, and we know it's squared here because we took side squared to get our area. We don't want the polynomial in factored form, though. What we want is the side length, and my side length here is just 4m minus 9. And again, we can double check that by uh, either foiling or using our properties here. First term squared, last term squared, I guess we could take the negative there. Either way, it's positive 81. Multiply the two together, gives me negative 36m, and double it, negative 72m. And that matches with our original polynomial. Take note here, factoring a difference of two squares. So if we have a squared minus b squared, that factors into a plus b and a minus b. And we started, again in section 8.4 I believe it was, with our binomials and multiplied them to get to here. Now we're just working backwards. So if our firsts are the same and our lasts are opposite, that's how we get first term squared minus last term squared because our signs are different. Our outsides and insides are going to cancel there. So if we see something like this, uh, z squared minus 9, okay, z squared is a perfect square and 9 is a perfect square. So what we have is, since we're subtracting, a difference of two squares. So we're going to take the roots of those, z squared is z and z, and 9 is 3 times 3. And we're going to have different signs in between them, and that is our factored form. Uh, we could have also factored this like we've been doing, but in order to do that, we have to remember that we currently have zero z's. Okay, zero linear factors. So here we'd have to multiply to 9 and subtract to 0. Options 1 and 9, nope, 3 and 3, yep. So to get to z squared is z and z. To get to 9 is 3 and 3. Since we subtracted and found the difference, our signs have to be different. And we get to the same place we did here. Uh, we also can FOIL this back to double check. Firsts, outsides, insides, last, when we combine like terms, we have zero z's, so I have z squared minus 9, which checks. Now, feel free to pause here and give this a try if you'd like. Here we have b squared and a hundred. Okay, both of those are perfect squares. b squared is b times b, and a hundred is ten times ten. So we're going to try and factor this as a difference of two squares. Difference means we're going to have different signs, okay, because we have a minus constant, means when we multiply our last, our signs have to be different. In order to get to b squared, it's b times b. In order to get to a hundred, we take ten times 10. Uh, it's important to foil these back guys just to make sure. Firsts, outsides, insides, lasts. Outsides and insides cancel and that's what we're looking for, uh, especially when we're checking to make sure our signs are right there and to make sure that we have the same factors. Here we have s squared which is a perfect square. S times s, and 16 is a perfect square, 4 times 4. Since we're multiplying to a negative 16, or because we're taking the difference of two squares, our signs are different. So anytime we see just two terms, one of them is squared, quadratic, and one of them is constant, degree 0, um, difference of two squares is going to be where we want to check first. I'm going to pause here and continue with another video.